For many of you, the internet has always been around, your whole life. It's the main way you get information, do research, and watch chiropractor neck cracking videos. <sighs> but before we could easily connect with smartphones, computers, and other tons of devices, there was pretty much only one place we would go to to get all the information that was fit to print. Its name starts with a lie and ends with a brary. Yes, libraries were the keepers of most of the things that made us smart. Years ago, decisions were made by many towns to make a building, the nook, to be the keeper of books. Imagine yourself inside your favorite library. What is the draw for you? And do you have any idea just how many libraries exist in the United States? There are over 116,000 libraries in the United States, and that's libraries of all types, so school libraries, public libraries, academic, special collections. I didn't even need a card to enter the Lovett Library at the Henry Ford in Detroit, because I was with the museum's librarian, Sarah Andrus. Who were the driving forces behind the introduction of public libraries in America? It would be very hard to ignore the effect Andrew Carnegie had on public libraries. He funded grants for libraries in America. He was a Scotchman who came to the United States as a child, and he had fond memories of libraries in Scotland. That's where it came from. This is one of his great legacies. It really is. He funded over 1,700 libraries in America with these grants, and several of them are still operating today. So what role do these public libraries take on in towns and cities? They become community spaces. You can go there, you can get your books, but they start programming fairly early on, so you can take your toddler to story time, you can look into your genealogy, you can do all of those things. Important civic spaces. They are important civic spaces. Even if you're just going there to read quietly in a corner, Yes, they're some of the last free public spaces. It seems as if libraries are a particular magnet for landmark architecture. They are, because you can get people funding huge libraries. So like the New York Public Library, that main branch is such an iconic destination, and it, it was meant to be. And then you have major universities, you get good donors going in for things like that, and that's where you can actually put some money. I just went on vacation to Columbus, Indiana. The library there is one of the earliest commissions for IMPEG. And while we associate libraries with preservation of knowledge, they're not stagnant. In fact, there's a concerted effort to keep libraries and their mission current. Libraries are going to continue to grow to serve their communities, and they're going to do it in whatever way possible. You probably still don't use a physical card catalog. You use an online catalog now. I can tell you that they're looking at different ways of how we catalog material to make it more accessible for people. The biggest change is going to be in that accessibility field, and the people that librarians in the library community want to feel are safe in our spaces and want to be able to bring into our profession.